when you stand up for yourself what happens do you do you get like a, a jolt of adrenaline do your thoughts start to race what what kind what sort of things happen for you when you do that it feels almost like i regain a sense of myself in a sense of like my power back which is kind of you know it, it feels kind of good it feels good to to stand in your power and to know you are competent you are able to handle life as it comes and even when these thoughts come come along telling you that you can't do it you know damn well that you can if she were here in the room today what would you like to say to her in this moment I would just like to say that like, you know, first, I love you. We've had a very, very rocky relationship. The reason for that is like, I've matured to the point where, again, I'm not, I'm not trying to, I realized that I was, I've, I've been punishing her for all of those things in the childhood, like throughout my 20s. I'm almost doing to her what she did to me. And we're just kind of repeating that cycle. All right, hey everyone, Spring Latte with the Latte Wellness Group. We're back on our series here um, where we're giving um, dramatizations or we are role playing uh, certain scenarios that come up in counseling sessions and how you can relate to that and strategies for um, dealing with these scenarios and how we would deal with it. And so essentially here, this is gonna be one of maybe many sessions where we're going to go through um, and the situation, the scenario is I am a 35 year old African-American male, right? I'm a 35 year old African-American male and um, I'm having relationship issues. Uh, essentially the relationship issue that I'm having is that I am giving more in my relationship I'm constantly giving, but it's not being reciprocated, right? I'm the one that's cooking breakfast, cooking, you know, lunch and everything. And it's kind of like, I want my partner to cook for me. I want us to split things. I don't really, it's almost like I love her more than she loves me, right? But it, but this issue is actually stemming from the fact that my idea of a relationship or my idea of a partnership is what uh, was modeled by my parents, right? Essentially here, what they modeled was that they love me just by caring for me and paying all the bills and doing all of this stuff. But the deeper type of like, hey, let's talk about this issue or like having discussions and all of that, it was a very authoritarian regime, <laughs> right? Not to call parenthood a regime, but I'm gonna use that word right and so um we hope that this role play is connecting to those that are struggling in relationships are struggling with your partner basically you're not you, you're looking for love right you know that you are a people pleaser you seek validation of others you look down on yourself and you you're, you're constantly trying to seek that love that you didn't receive as a child you're, you're trying to receive that love from somebody else Right, and so my name is going to be Frank Latte. I'm going to be the um, the uh, client, and we have the lovely Jules, and she's going to be the uh, our, our our therapist, our expert therapist for today. And again, this is a role play by the Latte Wellness Group, and so uh, we'll have um, we'll have Jules start. So Frank, tell me a little bit about what's brought you in. Yeah, so essentially here. Um, I have a fiance, you know, we just got engaged. We're looking to get married sometime next year, uh, next summer. And um, I have an issue, right? You have an issue. The issue is that it seems like I love her more than she loves me. Mm. And can you speak a little bit about what's the fear? connected if the love is is a bit out of equilibrium well i just noticed that like it seems like i'm always going the extra mile right and on the weekends i'm cooking breakfast i'm doing the dishes um like i'm always planning something 
Um, I'm always texting, hey, good morning, beautiful. How are you doing? But it seems like she's just she just does the bare minimum, right? Mm -hmm. um, and the issue is that I know that we're going to go to couples counseling and do all with all of this, but this has been a reoccurring theme in my relationships. Hmm. So this isn't the first time you've had this experience where things are a little bit out of sync. Can you, can you tell me about the very first time you remember a relationship that was out of balance? Well, some people say, some people always ask me about like, you know, so how was it with your parents, right? How was your <laughs> thing? Um, to me, I thought it was a pretty normal relationship, but I've been doing, you know, I do a lot of Google search and, you know, feeling unloved and doing all of this, you, you know, you know, basically right now, Google and chat GTP, they've been my therapist, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause you. You just said, you just said, I've been feeling unloved, but you said it with this big smile. Tell me what that means. Well, it's like, I started thinking about it and I think that I use a smile or I use this as a defense mechanism whenever I'm feeling really, really hurt. Mm -hmm. um, and like, I don't, I kind of, it's kind of something that eats me inside, but I don't want to show it out. I don't want to show it external. So there's a fear there. What do, you what do you imagine might happen if you show up and, and you wear the sadness on your face with me here. Fear of abandonment, fear of, of losing a relationship. So there's this sense that maybe if you show up as your real self, as your most authentic self, yeah. you might lose a relationship that means something to you. Yeah, it, I think it, I think it stems. I, I've always been like that growing up. Right. I've always been like trying to fit in, trying to um, seek the approval of others. Right. Yeah. I hear that. I hear that in many ways you, you've been wearing a mask for the benefit of other people. And now that we're here together, I have to ask, who are you, Frank, when you take off that mask? I guess at the end of the day, I'm I'm someone that wants to love and seek love, right? Um, like on the exterior, it looks like everything is going perfect, right? Not perfect, but you know, have a decent job, which I hate, but you know, it's it's okay, you know, from from these standards, you know, it pays the bills. I guess I never really sat, fully sat down and thought about that. Who am I? It sounds like you've, you've had a lot of experiences where you're showing up in this way that's designed to sort of hide your pain from those closest to you. And I, and I hear that that's created, you know, you've been in a lot of environments where there's a profound lack of attunement. People don't know who you really are. Yeah, you're right. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you're right. I want to shift the focus a little bit because before the session, you said it was important to you that we looked specifically at what was going on in your childhood. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so I was reading online something about like unresolved trauma. Um, mm -hmm. And basically, what they're saying is that, like, so in the childhood, like, I had loving parents, you know, extremely loving parents. I mean, love the way that they knew love, right? Mm -hmm. They provided for me. They, you know, you know, I didn't have any needs, but our relationship wasn't really that close. Um. It was more, hey, they asked me how I'm doing, hey, fine. But I was very like, 
I never became vulnerable to them because they're more like if anything goes wrong is your fault I, I hear that and I'm I'm also I'm gonna challenge you a little bit because you just said I didn't have any needs but in the beginning of the session you expressed that this was profoundly painful to be in environments in which people were not attuned to your needs I would say I didn't have any like when I said needs you're absolutely right um, I didn't have any like physical needs or like let's say materialistic needs but that need to want to be loved mm -hmm. right whatever that means mm -hmm. um and so oftentimes there was a hole there was like it was like a hole it was like a hole within me mm -hmm. and I would oftentimes try to seek I seek other things, seek the approval of others to really like feel that need of wanting to be loved. I hear that. I hear that as a child, you didn't feel loved. I mean, you, you, you note that like your material needs were met, right? But there was still a huge piece that you didn't have, that you're still longing for. And it sounds like that has to do with attunement and feeling understood. Am I understanding? What do you mean by that? Feeling understood? Yeah, and then attunement and all that. Yeah, I just get the sense that in wearing these masks, even in childhood, mm. your needs were suppressed. You were suppressing your own needs just to kind of keep the peace in the environment. And it sounds like, perhaps, and I could be wrong, there sounds like there, there was a desire there to take the mask off and to be truly known by those closest to you and understood by them. Hmm. Wow, man, that was, oh wow, man, that was deep. Man, that is deep. Yeah, that is, that is really deep, man. Will you tell me the thing that that little Frank needed to hear the most that he never heard as a child? I love you. You're doing a great job. Um, not everything's, you know, just because things go wrong, it doesn't necessarily mean it's my fault. Like, like you ever be like around people that it's like your fault that things are going wrong. Mm -hmm. Oh, why didn't you do this? Oh, you should have done this better. Oh, you should have did this. You should have did that. It's like, it's like, there's some things that are really just like out of my control. And it's, and it's really, really tough when I talk about this because it wasn't like it's always, you know, that they're always like that. But I do think that when I'm in those environments or when I'm in, when I felt criticized or like when I felt like, you know, unvalued or like they meant well, you know, they, you know, you know, they meant well. So like my parents, um, you know, they're, you know, we're, we're, they're, we're actually from like South America. Mm -hmm. um, I don't speak Spanish though, unfortunately, but like. Frank, I'm going to pause you. Yes. Do you, do you feel protective of them when you say, I don't think they meant anything by this? Well, I think they did the best that they could. Mm -hmm. I don't think they were doing it intentionally. I, and now that I'm 35, I'm able to reflect. Mm -hmm. I'm able to reflect on it a lo lot better than let's say when I was going through it in my 20s like I spent my 20s just being very very resentful of them mm. and you, you know but like as I grow older I it was a lot of pain and it was a lot of hurt there mm -hmm. and I realized that 
because there was a lot of pain, because there was a lot of hurt, I, I, I myself internalized it, right? And then I would now treat them, I found myself not being the best son, you know, because, oh, you, you didn't show me the love, you didn't show me the love that I wanted when I was younger and all of this and this. So now I'm taking out that frustration and that rage out on you, like in my adult years. I think it makes sense that you would be frustrated. You yeah. spent your childhood in an environment with, like you said, very good people who did the best they could to be there for you. But in many ways, it was kind of a mismatch. Yeah. They weren't attuned to what you were feeling. And there was this enormous criticism. And I'm, I'm wondering what it means to, to, to show up here with me in this environment. You've do you do worry about being criticized here with me? Well, the one thing I've liked so far is that you haven't blamed me for anything. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm used to being blamed for a lot of things. And I take that blame and I internalize it, but I don't really... And so I've just come, I've, I'm starting to become numb. <clears throat> and what happens is that like when I'm in that environment, when people just start criticizing me, blaming me, doing all these things, mm -hmm. I start to just shut down and tune out that relationship. Mm -hmm. Right. So then I, I, I become almost like that little boy, right. I'll become almost like that little boy that, Hey, their parents told them they were, you know, they were doing something bad and then they kind of like come you know go go inside you know go inside themselves and i find myself doing that sometimes you find yourself going inside yeah like when you were a kid to just keep yourself safe yeah does that show up here do you do you feel like do you feel like it's safe to to be fully who you are i i mean I feel safe. Like I, I feel probably a little bit too safe, man. I'm I'm having like diarrhea of the mouth right now. It's just I've I've held it in for so long. You know, like it it feels good to be able to talk about this and not have somebody immediately, oh, but this and this, you know, immediately have the objections, immediately you know, like it becomes combative. I'm right? wondering. Yeah, I'm wondering, Frank, can you tell me a little bit about which of your parents was kind of the more critical? They both had their own moments, right? Mm -hmm. I, I would say that my mom was probably a little bit more critical about just everyday stuff. My dad, he'll let things slide, but, you know, he was more, you know, hey, focus on education and this and this. Like the little stuff, it wasn't that bad. But yeah, it's really like, sometimes I felt criticism a lot from my mom. So as it shows up in your relationship today, yeah. do, do you ever hear her voice in her words as you're, as you're moving through life nowadays? All the time. Yeah? What's the thing you hear the most in her voice? Don't do it this way. Don't do it this way. You know, uh, be careful. I'm looking back on it now. It seems like she's had a lot of anxiety. She she was a warrior, right? And so now I kind of like internalize. I find myself internalizing her worry, you know, like, but that voice, but through that voice, like, of, oh, I don't know. It's just like anything like I see, oh, she wanted everything her way. Mm -hmm. It had to be done a certain way. Um, you know, like, and if it wasn't done this way, then it's not good, or if it's not this. And so it's kind of like, it's almost like sometimes I did have to suppress my own self. I hear that. I hear that, you know, there was quite a bit kind of coming at you as far as criticism and you had to 
suppress your own desires, your own thoughts. Have you, have you ever kind of played with the idea of just confronting in our work, confronting some of the things that she would say to you? What do you mean? Well, for example, if, if, if she were to say, don't do it, have you ever thought about what it might feel like to say, you know what, I am going to do it. And to say that out loud, have you ever tried that? I'm thinking here, you, you, you're making me really reflective, right? Um, somebody was telling me, look, be careful when you start the therapy because they're going to make you really think about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, but to answer your question, I, the, the problem is that it happens, mm -hmm. but then I, I think it's like I freeze up again. And it's like, I we just go right back to repeating that same cycle. And I'm trying to think of where there are times where I actually did confront it. Well, you know, I'm a person-centered therapist, so you, you lead, I follow. But if you if you feel ready, then we can confront some of that. Maybe yeah. if you, yeah? Yeah, yeah, let's do that. I mean, maybe if you give it a physicality, have you ever tried just saying, no, stop, I'm doing it my way, to just try it on, see what it feels like? Um... No, I haven't. No. Should we try that? Do you feel comfortable trying? Hey, why not? Let's do it. So let's let's give it a physical feeling. Let's give it a physicality, more or less. Okay. Just in the body. What is it what does it feel like to just put your hands up and set that boundary? Am I supposed to be thinking about like a thought that like if my mom would say something or so put a boundary mm -hmm. there? Yeah. So if I were to play your mom, I would say, don't do it, Frank. Like you said to me that she often said. And in response, we're going to try something new where you put up both hands and you set a physical boundary and you say, stop. I'm going to do it my way. I make good decisions. Just to see what it feels like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do it. Okay. All okay. right. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to take on the role of your mom. And if it starts to feel really triggering, you let me know. Okay. Okay. All right. So, Frank, don't do that. Stop. I want to do it my way. I, I do make good decisions. I am responsible. You know, I'm not I'm not that child anymore. Hmm. Right? What did it feel like to talk to me as your mom? Well, it felt good. Yeah, it I like the thing that you said stop. I'm going to do it my way. I do make good decisions. Mm -hmm. Like the issue that I find myself is my her her reactions are old, are like old, are automatically overriding my thoughts about mm -hmm. the situation. But when you tell me to kind of like say, "Hey, like put your own thing," you do make good decisions to stop. It's it it kind of shuts off that autopilot almost, right? Mm hmm. We can engage when we, you know, when we have thoughts that, that we're not so fond of, we can engage with those thoughts. You know, we, we can tell those thoughts to go take a long walk on a short pier. That's perfectly fine to do that, to take your, your power back. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, I like that. I encourage you to challenge yourself self to, to step into your power. Hmm. Uh, I mean, 
there are a lot of therapists that might try to, you know, say coping skills, whatever. Um, but I, I trust that you're stronger than what may have happened in the past. And you're strong enough to be able to confront this. We don't need to, to treat this as though it's a bomb ready to go off. You have the capacity to hold everything that happened in the past. Hmm. I never looked at it from that. I never looked at it from that perspective before. Yeah. What, what is it like to just stand up for yourself to her? Even though she's, you know, she's not physically here, I, I think this, the spirit of who she is is in our space. Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting when you say that because, I mean, my mind races all the time. And so to answer your question, it feels good to stand up to her, but like... I'm also thinking about, I really just need to stand up for myself, like in just situations like that, right? When, when I face the criticisms, when I face those things and somebody says something, hey, you know, or they want to point this out or point that out, I, you're right. I'm not used to really standing up for myself and I mean, it, it, it actually does feel good. When you stand up for yourself, what happens? Do you do you get like a, a jolt of adrenaline? Do your thoughts start to race? What what kind what sort of things happen for you when you do that? It it feels almost like I regain a sense of myself mm -hmm. in a sense of like my power back. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of, you know, it, it feels kind of good. It feels good to, to stand in your power and to know yeah. you are competent. Yeah. You are able to handle life as it comes. And even when these thoughts come, come along telling you that you can't do it, you know damn well that you can. Mm. No, you're right. I like that. If she were here in the room today, what would you like to say to her in this moment? I, I would, I would just, I would just like to say that like, you know, first I love you, <laughs> you know, um, you know, we've, we've had a very, very rocky relationship um, I wouldn't start off negative right away, right? Um, again, the reason the reason for that is like I've matured to the point where, again, I'm not I'm not trying to almost. I realized that I was I've, I've been punishing her for all of those things in the childhood like throughout my 20s and so I'm trying to mature to the point of hey you know um not really punishing her and you know being angry and raged because then it, then it sends essentially I'm 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 almost doing to her what she did to me and we're just kind of repeating that cycle, right? Frank, I, I noticed that every time you say the words, I love you, you break eye contact. Yeah. And you start looking far away and I'm just wondering what's, what's out there that you keep looking at? We don't really say I love you to each other. And so, I look away because I'm trying to imagine what our relationship, how our relationship would be different if we 
started saying, you know, I love you, right? You know, like, I, um, I, I'm trying to imagine, like, I would imagine that she would smile. <laughs> She'd smile. You know, it's so, it can be so contentious that, yeah, so I, I'm just imagining what her reaction would be. This is a lot for us to, to keep looking at. And I notice we're kind of coming towards the end of our session. I want to check in with you. How are you feeling in this moment? I, I feel amazing right now. You know, I, I feel good. Um, I, obviously, I have a lot to work on. And it's not going to be an overnight success. But I, I'm thinking that like we're building like a foundation, like we're rebuilding my foundation from like from a viewpoint of like strength mm -hmm. versus before where if I think about relationships and and love relationships, it's it just creates so much anger and so much rage inside of me, you know? And that's okay. We don't need to be afraid of that. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to encourage you between now and our next session, if you're open to, to keep a journal and to start, start saying to her all mm. those things that you wish you could have. Mm. Man. Man, that's deep. Man, that's deep. I look forward to seeing you next week, Frank. Oh, man, this is... Thank you so much. This was great. You're welcome. Take good care. Thank you. <laughs>